Hello Live Wires, Heather Boyd Wire here, and today it's Tip Tuesday. So I received this stepped wooden mandrel that I ordered on Amazon, thanks to Ginger, she suggested it. This is for making wider rings. I'm actually not going to use the smooth one. I'm going to put that at the side. It comes with a stand. I'll use this one that has the steps and the sizing on it. The advantage of this is you can make wider rings and they'll stay at the same size. I really needed this when I was making my unisex rings a couple of weeks ago. I have a few tutorials for those that I'm going to link up below. And today I'll revisit the design using the stepped mandrel. What you're going to need for this project is your ring mandrel. If you don't have a ring mandrel like this, you can use a marker or a highlighter. You're going to need 20 gauge wire. I have the artistic wire from Beadalon. I also have 16 gauge wire, my round pliers, flat pliers, cutters, and you can also add beads. So take about a 12 to 15 inch piece of the 16 gauge wire. I want to make a size 7 ring, but this wire has a lot of tension, so I'm actually going to wrap it around the 6, and then we'll see how much it springs back. So we're going to go around about 5 times. You can make it as wide as you want. So say we just go around five times like that, give it a little squeeze, and then you'll see it comes back. Like there is quite a bit of tension on the wire. So see if it's a good size there. And then we can remove it from the ring cone and you'll see it makes a nice even cylinder because it's not a cone shape. Now we can take some 20 gauge wire. You could use 18 if you want as well. It depends on how chunky you want it. Hold these together and then just wind this around and you want to make sure these wires stay one beside the other and then we're just going to keep winding this one around however many times that you want and then what I want to do is I'm actually going to bend one of these up and then this one down as I previously did and then if you want this to be even more secure can wind that one around there and this one around here so you have it on either side. You could really finish it any way that you want. You just want to finish the ends. So we're going to clip that one, clip that one, and then get your needle nose pliers so it's nice and hidden the end. Just squeeze it in a little bit. And then these ends, you could just make them into little loops. So if you want to just take this end, hold it with your pliers, push it around. The 16 gauge is very stiff, so you're just going to bring it right around. You can put it back on the ring cone so it keeps its size at 7. And then just take this and give it a pull. And then over here you can do the same. You can remove it, start it with your round pliers. This is brass wire, so it's very stiff. And we're gonna put it back on the seven mark. Just push it in a little bit. And this one too, so it's about the same. And then we can clip it. Don't use your best pliers if these wires are really stiff. The brass is quite stiff. So I'm just going to nick it and then bend it to clip it. And then we're going to remove it and press these little ends in there. So we've got that one and that one. And there you have your funky uh, unisex ring. So the 18 gauge is much easier to work with. So we'll just take it and wind it around the mandrel. So hold it with your thumb and then just bring it around a few times depending on how wide you want the ring to be. So we're just going to go around a few times. We can just go around like five times or you can go around six times if you have enough wire. Just bring it all the way around and we're going to remove it from the mandrel. Hold it with your flat pliers. You can use my hack where you put an elastic there to hold it in place so it doesn't get scratched. So just hold it and then take this one and bring it down 
and through. So we're going to go down and through to hold it in place on that side and then we're going to flip it around carefully so it holds together and then we're going to hold it in between here and bring it down and through. So we're going to go right up to there. So we have that one on that side and let's go back here. If it springs you're going to have to spread them a little bit. Hold that in place and then bring that one down. So we have this configuration here and we're just going to clip one side, clip the other side and then we're just going to pinch these down so they hold in place. You can always hammer them if you have to and then you can add a bead in there if you want. So now you're going to take a piece of the 20 gauge wire, just slide it in there and take one end and bend it around a couple of times. So just push it in there, take the end, just jiggle your hand a bit if you have to tighten it up so that you have one on that side and then flip this around. Make sure it's like snug over to the side. Bring this, bend it, just spread these out a bit, slide on your bead and then feed the end through the ring again. So take this, slide it through there, take the end with the pliers and then you can just go to this side and wind it through again. So depending on how long your wire is, you can wind it through as many times as you want. Just a couple times is fine to hold it in place. And then we'll just clip the end, the other end. Now you can just push those ends in and squeeze these together a little bit. And if you have to go in and pinch that in a bit, if the wires are a little wonky, just go in with your pliers and push them together a little bit. And then I always like to go back on the ring cone. I started at a seven, but when you wind it around with the wire, you have to take that into account and the ring becomes smaller. Account for about one ring size, depending on how much wire you wind around it. There's your funky unisex ring with a bead. So thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more wire art and jewelry making videos. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I go live and when I post new videos. And if you'd like to share photos of your wire art and jewelry, be sure to join the Wire Makers Club on Facebook. And if you'd like to check out my work on Etsy, my husband and I specialize in custom wedding cake toppers and funky jewelry. I also have a mailing list, so if you'd like to sign up below, I'll send you my Wire Art Essentials ebook. So, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you the next time.